With free agency around the corner, let's discuss whether or not or how the Bengals may engage with big game hunting. You are Locked On Bengals, your daily Cincinnati Bengals podcast. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. What up, Bengals fans, and welcome to another episode of the Locked On Bengals podcast. I'm your host, Jake Lesko. He's your host, James Rapine. We're on YouTube and everywhere you get your podcasts. And when you hit that subscribe button, it not only supports us and grows the channel, but it also makes it easy for you to become an everydayer and to make us your first listen. We're going to pivot and get into free agency today and talk about some of the big names and why the Bengals may or may not get involved with some of those big names. We'll have to talk about guaranteed money and salary cap and cash spend and all those fun things in addition to some of the players that may or may not make sense. And today's episode is sponsored by FanDuel, where you can get $150 in bonus bets with any winning $5 bet. Visit FanDuel.com slash locked on to get started. And James, there are some guys that are getting franchise tagged. There are guys that are not getting franchise tagged. And at a position that we know the Bengals will be interested in investing money in free agency, Christian Wilkins looks to be one of the top free agents, period, at this point with all of the franchise tags that have occurred and is a guy that on paper looks like he would fit a lot of things the Bengals are looking for at that position in free agency. Oh, he would. He would. Lou Anaruma would love to plug him into the middle of his defense and wreak havoc. And I know Marion Hobby obviously has a relationship with him from his days at Clemson. And, you know, we could go on and on and on about how it fits. But I'm going to be the one that says it, Jake. The Bengals shouldn't go after Christian Wilkins. They shouldn't. They shouldn't be in the four years, 100 million for a 28 year old realm, the possibility. Because if we're talking four years, 100 million, well, I know a certain number five that would probably enjoy that number. And Wilkins is 28 and he's run stuffer, but was really good last year, had nine sacks. I get it. He would be awesome for them. I also think that the final two years of that deal might be a little rough. And so. I'm okay with the Bengals. Sometimes I want them to go big game hunting and we will talk about who I would target big name wise, at least because there are guys. But when I look at this, I would love, like if they could tag him for the, for the 20 plus million that Miami had the chance to, I would love that. I just think the back end of that deal, it's, it's pretty scary. And you could say the caps going up and all of those things. I get all of it. And I didn't even mention his agent. But if I'm the Bengals, I don't think I need to swim in those waters to shore up a defensive line that they're already spending big money at with Trey Hendrickson at the top and Sam Hubbard and BJ Hills under contract. So they're already spending money there. If you, especially if you want to keep DJ Reader, any possibility, then you you certainly don't want them to give Christian Wilkins a hundred million dollars because if they do that, whatever second defensive tackle they add is going to be making slightly more than Jake Lisko. Wait a minute. I had to do the math on that. <laughs> Look uh, at you but, checking the cap, the cap num the cap the, numbers. I, the, I do uh, believe your salary will fit in, in the, the Bengals cap. <laughs> the NFL league minimum for a rookie is significantly more money than Fair. anyone on this so you, podcast makes. You, you overanalyzed it. Um, I was just trying to figure out what you meant. Like, yeah, no, no, no crap. Uh, the top of the defensive tackle market looks like it'll be Chris Jones and Christian Wilkins. Chris Jones yeah. at thirty million per year, going into his age thirty season from the Chiefs. Man, again, a guy that on paper would fit if you think he can keep it up at a high level. But the kind of guarantees these guys are going to be seeking is really where this kind of falls apart for the Bengals. I think Christian Wilkins does make sense. And the last year of that deal in particular is the one where, for me, it would get into kind of the where's the cliff. We're walking toward a cliff, and it's foggy, and we can't see the ground. And that's kind of the nature of defensive tackle in your early 30s. At the same time, if you're talking about bringing back DJ Reader, same issue. If you're talking about going after Grover Stewart, same issue. If you're talking about going after many of the more uh, accomplished free agent defensive tackles or nose tackles in this class, same issue. 
And, and that's the problem with this year's crop of free agents on the defensive. There's interior. one big difference. There's one big difference though. Their numbers are much closer to that Jake Lisko salary. They might not be, but their numbers are going to be. And I love DJ Reader. He's not going to be swimming in the same ocean. I mean, he's he's many many pools away from what Christian Wilkins is going to get. That and, is true. And those guys that you mentioned, you could sign at least two, at least two for the the Grover Stewart or, or for the Grover Stewart money for the Christian Wilkins money. Yeah, and that would require the Bengals again doing something they haven't done in the Joe Burrow era of free agency, which is giving out a contract to a player that's going to finish by the time that player is 32. Like the, the contracts they've given out to free agents all end by the time that player is 31 in their last year or younger. And, and that's been their MO. That except not, Reef because of the one year? Yeah, except, except the one, uh, uh, maybe, and, you know, uh, the safety from Lou Anarumo's past early on what was it ricardo allen was was long in the tooth when they signed him as well getting the name right today you're on it today mike uh uncle mike why am i forgetting his last mike name thomas mike thomas, thomas. they had two mike thomas Bengals name ever yeah yeah mike thomas also uncle mike <laughs> a, a little bit older as a free agent but for guys they've signed to multi-year deals they're they're uh ending by the time that player is 31 but for, for all, all of this talk about christian wilkins and the fit and and the age and all that stuff none of it matters because like you mentioned you didn't mention the agent for christian wilkins which is david mulligetta and the mm -hmm. bengals simply do not historically guarantee year two money david mulligetta clients get guaranteed year two salary Christian Wilkins will be seeking guaranteed year two salary. This isn't a situation where, for the most part, you wouldn't expect that the Bengals would be able to go big signing bonus to take care of all the guarantees Christian Wilkins is looking for. Brad Spielberger, by the way, projecting him at $67.5 million in guarantees. The Bengals aren't doing a signing bonus that big. They just did their biggest signing bonus ever last year with Orlando Brown, and they have huge bonuses coming up. For Joe Burrow, that's a little bit different than an external free agent that they're signing as an unrestricted free agent. They're just not going to do it. So for whatever you think about the money, because it fits, it does fit from a cap perspective if they structure the deal like Orlando Brown. That $25 million average turns into a $16 million year one cap hit, and then the expanding cap in the future takes care of everything down the road. But the guaranteed money is going to be a non-starter for Christian Wilkins. And He's so, getting, You mentioned guaranteed money year two. That man's getting guaranteed money going into year three. Some of it, you know, it, right. it, it'll be, it, it, that's, they're just not there. And, and again, for a 28 year old, if it was 25 for Justin Matabike, right? I, I wouldn't really debate it at all. I think it's worth the money. I think he's the disruptor. He's a different player than Christian Wilkins, but I, I would totally get it to be clear. I, I do think the age times money times, length of contract, all of that, that's a lot. But Matabika, if he's just out there, yeah, of course. S sign me up for 20 plus million dollars for four years for him. And when we look at the rest of this defensive tackle class at free agency, when we put together our free agent plans, we're going to be talking about a bunch of other names. But it, it is a tough class to find guys that tick all the Bengals boxes. The productivity, the age, the lack of need for guarantee, this might push them toward the mercenary, the ring chaser, whatever you want to call it, the one-year deals for a guy like Shelby Harris who can still play at a high level, the flyers on a guy like Maurice Hurst or going after a Grover Stewart type. Yeah, baby. Or even bringing back DJ Reader, right? Like these are all kind of in the same age range and four. could be similar. Give me all four for the price of Christian Wilkins. Hmm. Not really, but close. it's close. It's close. <laughs> Closer than it should be. Uh, for for a single player, yeah, <laughs> it's crazy. It, and and I I do I think that's how they'll view it. Is they'll be like, all right, he's awesome, we'd love to have him, no freaking way. And then they move on to the next, whether that's right or not, we'll see. But uh, you, you mentioned some mercenaries, potential guys they could target it, that would fall under the the ring chaser category. I have one that I want to discuss really, really badly. I don't think we've talked about it on the pod yet, and we will do that coming up next.
Today's show is brought to you by FanDuel. Get buckets with your first bet on FanDuel, America's number one sports book, because right now new customers get $150 in bonus bets with any winning $5 bet. That's $150 bucks if your bet wins. So maybe you wagered on LeBron and the Lakers handling business against the Thunder. Maybe you're thinking, all right, the Cavaliers are without Donovan Mitchell. I still think they're going to get it done. You throw five bucks on that. If you're right, you get 150 bucks in bonus bets. From quick bets to same game parlays, I love the live game betting that you can do with FanDuel to exclusive props. So much more. Just go to FanDuel.com slash locked on to shoot your shot. That's FanDuel.com slash locked on. FanDuel, official sportsbook partner of the NBA. James, we just spent some time talking about the big fish in the defensive trenches. And why did we start there when the Bengals need to protect Joe Burrow and they need a right tackle? What do you think? They do need a right tackle. And I think a lot of people want Mike and Wenu. I think there are some that say bring back Jonah Williams. Uh, there's no one that's saying start Jackson Carmen, which we all agree with. We can get into some other options as well. But to me, there's one guy that is clearly at the top of the list. That should be at the top of the list. Age shouldn't matter. Health to a certain degree because Zach Taylor is a player-friendly coach because Zach Taylor will let this guy do whatever it takes to get the Sunday. And as long as he's there for the playoffs anyways, that's a real key. Tyron Smith, I would absolutely make the call. He's 33 years old. He's primarily played left tackle. He's also the best tackle on the market by far when healthy. I know he has injury issues. I know he's not super young, 23. Yeah, because he would get $30 million per year if he was 30, 23, becoming a free agent, not 33. He would be awesome, and he would play left tackle forever. But the Bengals have the relationship with Frank Pollock. He was in Dallas for five years, and there are going to be so many people that say, we've already done this. Don't compare Lyle Collins to Tyron Smith again because that's the most disrespectful thing in history. That would be like saying, well, I don't know. I don't want to crap all over Lyle Collins because I actually like Lyle, but the point remains, Tyron Smith is just a much better player, has played over 1,300 NFL snaps, most of them as a rookie, but over 1,300 snaps at right tackle. I, I think it does make a lot of sense to make the call because he may get an offer from the Chiefs. That's fine. He may get an offer from one of these other teams, but the Bengals... They have Joe Burrow. They are attractive. They got Riley Reef to do this, by the way. Riley Reef played right. And I know it's not the same level. I get it. But Riley Reef had left tackle and played a ton of left tackle for the Vikings and moved to right tackle. So I think that this, when I look at this, or maybe it was guard, either way, whatever it was, he had played multiple spots. I do think that I, the Bengals should reach out to Tyron Smith and one year deal. You know, maybe maybe there's a team option in year two. They go that route if he wants that type of security. But to me, I think there's a 50-50 chance he at least entertains the idea, and he's clearly the best option. Yeah, the thing with Tyron Smith is you need another piece. And you can get one in the draft, most likely. Like, Tyron mm -hmm. Smith is a great bridge option if he's willing to play right tackle. But he hasn't played a full season since since 2015 nearly a decade <laughs> since tyron smith played a full 16 at the time game season since then he's missed only a handful of games in some years but then had the two game season in 2020 the four game season in 2022 11 game season in 2021 just 13 games last year when by just, the way he was how many games do they play just that's i would take 13 out of 17 when, by the way, he was back to being a second team All Pro in 2023. I mean, you're talking about a very likely future Hall of Famer, if not future Hall of Fame lock. I'm not sure where consensus is on Tyron Smith. Maybe he's been too injured in his career to be a lock for the Hall of Fame, but two got to win a ring. Team if he wins a ring in Cincinnati, he'll, he'll get, into, get in the Hall of Fame. And winning a Super Bowl definitely helps. So, doesn't make sense. It makes sense in the in the ways that it is a, a a bridge option if the Bengals wanted to draft a tackle that needs some time to develop. Maybe that's Tyler Guyton as a guy who could need some time to develop and put the tools together, who is in some ways similar to Tyron Smith as a prospect. Uh, Tyron Smith, a little bit more of an athletic freak 
coming into the NFL, but similar athletic tools, right? Could make sense from a money perspective, could make sense from a Frank Pollock connection perspective, but carries the risk, the injury risk of an older player who's had significant injuries in his career, the switching position risk. But like you said, is it, is it worth a call? Think back to, and, and this is a, a good shout from Brad Spielberger, Andrew Whitworth goes and joins the Los Angeles Rams late in his career. Doesn't have the injury record that Tyron Smith has, but can pull a reverse Whitworth on yourself if you're the Bengals, and instead of letting him go, bring one in that could potentially help you if things work out. And, and that's a big if, obviously. I'm not trying to compare the two because of the health concerns, but that's why you at least ask the question and have the conversation. No doubt. No doubt. It, it's high ceiling, and, and ultimately with this team, they were, a, what, a game out of the playoffs without Joe for seven games? You want Tyron Smith in the postseason. And our boy Mike Santagata, I was talking with him about Tyron Smith. And according to him, I didn't even look, but as far as playoff goes, he said Tyron's never missed a playoff game because of injury. That's when you really need him. Let's be honest. That's when you're – not that you don't need him during the season to get there, but he's he has – been able to hold up, held up last year pretty well. If you get 13 out of 17 and then he also plays in the playoffs, I would take that all day long. And to your point, the Bengals need to draft an offensive tackle early anyways, regardless of who they sign. It doesn't matter who they sign, honestly, whether it's at 18 or 49, maybe all the way to 80, maybe you push it to 80 and in some scenarios, it seems unlikely, but they got to leave the first two days of the draft with an offensive tackle. They just do. There's just a ton of them. And and so this raises the the floor and the ceiling when he's out there in Tyron Smith. And I, I think you have a shot at least to convince him to play right tackle because it's not like it's he's he would take a huge pay cut to do so. It's not like right tackle is looked down upon now in the NFL. It's not. It's just as it's just as important. I, I really don't know what the the difference is. Honestly, I think it's just as important as left tackle. I was just gonna look at the average salaries at left tackle versus right tackle just to see what what the difference is if anything right now and it is true that right tackles are still paid less than left tackles so for whatever that's well, worth because there are there are better there are more famous left tackles there are better left tackles like and, and the i think right tackle in the league versus the best left tackle like I, I think timing but, is part of it too it's lane johnson yeah. who and taylor moten to be fair those two guys are both really, really good at their position. Jack Conklin just signed an extension, right? Fifteen million. That would be way down the list for left tackles. Mm -hmm. So, but but the, last year, all the money that was being thrown out to right tackle. It's why I think Jonah's going to get paid. Mike and Wenu could, but to me, I think the Bengals could view and Wenu as a guard. Obviously, we know what Tyron Smith is. You have the relationship there. Like, just try because after that. It gets pretty bleak. That, if you're not counting in Wenu, yeah. I mean, it gets pretty darn bleak. Like, if you're not re-signing Jonah, you're not signing on Wenu, and they wouldn't pay him to be a guard anyway. So if they did sign him, he'd be the right tackle. But, mm -hmm. man, it uh, it gets really shallow really quick. So, yeah, that, that might be part of it for me. But why not? You're you're in win-now mode. You're tagging T and playing T on the – well, Go get Tyron Smith, age, age, age 34, you know, wait, well, he's 33 now. Get, get him for two years. Maybe, yeah, may, maybe do a two-year deal if he, wants, if he wants a little security because he's switching the right tackle. I'll do two years. It would be an interesting idea. It's worth exploring. It's worth doing your medical checks, as it were, because I do think they probably have a little bit of PTSD from the L.L. Collins He's so much better. Experiment. He is better. Yeah. I'm just saying from a health perspective, like you no want doubt. to make sure that he's not got a deteriorating issue that's going to, you know, really affect him and hinder, hinder him like LC was hindered with the back the whole year with the Bengals. Yeah, you know, you're right. And I think that's really the only similarity is that and they played for yeah. Dallas. Yep. But that's it. By the way, Taron Smith obviously played great under Frank Pollock. So under probably everybody. probably. No, I know, but, but but key years, developmental years. Yeah, he was in AJ Green's draft. It's kind of crazy to think about, but he spent key developmental years with with Pollock. So, 
while you're uh, making us feel old, Drake Kirkpatrick's son is uh, out there in spring bowl for Alabama right now. Let's uh, finish up this show with a few more thoughts on big fish and guaranteed money and cap space and all those fun things coming up next. Passion, drive, and patience. What brings home the winning trophy is also what keeps your ride or die alive. eBay Motors has everything you need to maintain your vehicle and level it up to peak performance from superchargers, roof racks, exhaust kits, LED headlights, and more. Whether you're into speed, power, or style, eBay Motors has got you covered. And I just ordered, and you got to do it. Your engine air filter, your cabin air filter, you got to replace those things. And you can do them yourself really, really easy. eBay Motors is going to have the one that you need. So don't pay the dealership hundreds of bucks to do it when you can go with eBay Motors. They have over 122 million parts for your number one ride or die. And you'll always find exactly what you're looking for with eBay Guaranteed Fit. You know it's guaranteed to fit your ride every time or your money back. Because with eBay Motors, you're burning rubber and not cash. Keep your ride or die alive at ebaymotors.com. Eligible items only. Exclusions apply eBay guaranteed fit only available to U.S. customers. Mike and Manu would be a big fish, by the way, uh, a big target. I'm in. I'm in at right tackle if they want to. I'm in. And and that is a contract that seems palatable to me, at least what's projected by Brad Spielberg, the, the four years, 14 and a half million with 33 guaranteed. That's in the range of what they did for Orlando Brown last year, and it doesn't represent a significant increase in cap expenditure compared to what they had last year with Jonah Williams. It, it does mean you have a lot of money locked up in your tackles long term. It does mean that if if you're signing a money, you better be open to him playing guard if you need him to, despite the money, because you shouldn't be passing on a blue chip offensive tackle prospect in the first round but it gives you the flexibility to and and mm -hmm. part of the thing with a tyron smith or an Wenu or a makai becton who is picking up steam as a name associated with the cincinnati bengals and frank pollock or even a jermaine illuminor is none of them take tackle off the board for you in the first round but they all give you the peace of mind to not force it and reach and mm -hmm. and say you know what this is Billy Price all over again. We are desperate for a tackle. All the tackles we really wanted are gone. We need to take one anyway. Let's go pick a guy around too early. Yeah, and, and let's you need let, to avoid that scenario. Let's take Tyler Guyton over Jackson Powers Johnson, right? Like that's the the type of scenario where it'd be like, oh, especially if they have JPJ high. I don't know if they do, but mm -hmm. they could certainly. Let, let's let's take a a guy that we like but we don't love over a, a different position because of need. And I agree with you. I, I would be in on Mike and Wenu. I don't know, by the way, just to be clear to all of our viewers and listeners, I don't know if they view him as a guard versus tackle. I do think it's possible though. And that's why I mention it because if they view him as an offensive guard or a guard, not an offensive tackle, they are not even going to call him. <laughs> I don't even think there's any interest. If they view him as a right tackle. I think there could be to, to Jake's point is, is the contract could work. They could be open to it, and the versatility is appealing. At least to me, it's appealing. I don't know if it would be to them. Other tackle options, Jermaine Illuminor, he's someone that has that versatility, has played multiple spots. If you drafted someone at 18 that you think could start, he could literally back up everything but center. He could be your swing tackle and your swing guard if you wanted him to be. I don't know if they would ask him to do all of those, but he could be and be your sixth offensive lineman off the bench. So certainly someone to consider. I don't think they'll be in on Trent Brown, but if he's cheap enough, I would get it because it gets really, really, really shallow really, really quickly. Mm -hmm. It does. And and that's where the questions of where they're going to spend money this offseason become interesting to me because they do have a lot of money to spend. They have a lot of cap space to fill, and they will fill it one way or another, at least within, I would say, $7 million of the cap, if they choose to roll money over this year, which they've kind of got a varied track record on in recent years. They've rolled over more and less money in recent years. Last year, they end up rolling over money, I think, largely because LC is a late cut. They're holding money for T. Higgins' potential extension. That Higgins extension didn't come to fruition. LC being a late cut means that they end up 
with more cap space than expected, uh, which is a bit of a failure of roster planning, but that's not really what we're here to discuss. But when you look at the options at defensive tackle, the options at offensive tackle, the two clearest needs, the options that say tight end, there's not clear cut guys where you're like, you know what, this the, the Bengals should go sign this tier one free agent. Maybe Mike and one is the guy, maybe Christian Wilkins is the guy, maybe Chris Jones is the guy for you listening. We, we've talked about those options, some reasons the Bengals may or may not be in play for, for those guys. But what if they do go sign a big money safety? Where, where are they going to put the money? What if they go sign a starting corner this year? And just say, you know what, let's just spend money at corner. There are a ton of safeties out there. That's why I bring up safety. I think that I would still be a little bit surprised by this, but the number of starter capability level free safeties this year, especially compared to last year, is staggering. It's a, it's an extremely long list. Guys keep getting cut as well. And so it's something that I think makes increasing sense if the Bengals really are feeling shaky about Dax Hill's future and, and want to have, they, they see it as an opportunity to be like, you know what? It's a buyer's market. We can get better there and we can mm -hmm. use Dax in some other way. That's where and, I'm looking and, at safety. But when you, when you look at their cap situation, sorry, James, they, they can fit a lot of guys in. Like if they really wanted to, they could sign Mike and Wenu, Christian Wilkins, Fant, a veteran safety, a veteran running back, a veteran cornerback. And that would work from a cap perspective. But then from a cash and guarantees perspective, that's where that doesn't end up working for some of those players. Point is, they have to spend the money. And so we'll, we'll see where it goes. And to your point about safety, I, I think in 2020 when they signed Von Bell, they didn't necessarily have Von Bell as a, oh, we're going to go get him. Yeah, And it was because of the way the market was and he was just still out there and it, it just kind of worked. And I, I think that they... They can do that. Not that they'll wait on safety, but there's so many guys now that if they really want Geno Stone, they should be able to get him for a reasonable price or if they want to get one of these guys. I do think that this idea that their defense is going, like desperately needs a safety, whatever safety they do sign, unless it's just a huge impact guy, I think it's going to be pretty, it's not going to be a, a huge war. Not gonna have a ton of wins above replacement from whatever safety they get. So hopefully they view it that way in my eyes. And then just go get Mike and win it. Or go get the, the defensive tackle that you don't think that they should splurge on, whoever it is. Maybe it is Christian Wilkins. Maybe they don't. by the way, I'll praise him if they do that because he, he's awesome and he helps them right now win. I I, I don't know if it's a, a smart long-term buy, but should they swim in the deep safety pool, the pool? Of, of town, if, if you're gonna have to spend eight to ten million, I'd even rather get this. And, and every dayers are gonna love this. I'd rather spend that on Noah Fant than I would. You get Joe Burrow another weapon. I would rather do that than overspend. A, you know, on Cameron Curl, for example, if you've given him eight million, ten million per, I think he's projected for more than that. If I more like thirteen. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, just give me Fant. Dang it, and go go get a. A Geno Stone. Think about it. You could have Fant and Stone for a similar run. Mm -hmm. I would much rather have that. So what hopefully about, they view it that way. What about who? What about keeping Derrick Henry off the Ravens? I mean, <laughs> honestly, my We're running back. We're talking crazy. Sure. And, and I depends on the money, right? He should want to play with Joe Burrow way more than, you know, in, in this offense, I think, because he, he could instantly help. But – and it would be a good home for him. But to me, I would take that running back. I would throw it elsewhere too. And so maybe that's what you use safety-wise. Is I'm getting cheaper at running back. That's what I'm doing. But it's they just, do have money to spend. The, the reason I bring it up is because ideally, where do they spend money? Trenches. Right. And where are the free – where is the strength and, and thin the, the depth and, and lack of depth – in, in this free agency class is, is the trenches where they need help aren't deep. And like, they're happy with their interior offensive line. So it's not like they're going to go out there and, and get a young guy who's, who's broken out like a Robert Hunt or a Kevin Dotson. They're not going to bring back Kevin Zeitler. So where, where are they spending the money? Do you hear that? Tyron Smith, you are a Bengal. Mike and Wenu, you are a Bengal. One of those two. 
Go, just go get one. Just go it, get one. Come on it, now. It kind of seems like they might have to. Like they, they got to find a way to, to spend the money. And, Who would and you rather have? Better. Who would you rather have? You know, a, a big one of these higher paid safeties. I would rather have Jesse Bates than all of them. Just oh yeah. <laughs> so, so I, 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 I'm scarred by that, but like, man, it, to me, they have so much money they can use. I would use it on the, the positions that matter, but don't let that impact what you do in the draft. Like if you, you sign on one, still, still draft a tackle. If, if the right offensive tackles. Yeah. We'll have more time to talk about free agency. We're going to talk with Brad Spielberger from PFF tomorrow to talk about some of his contract projections, what he heard or didn't hear at the NFL combine and where he thinks this free agency is going. We'll get into some free agent plans. We'll get into some, hopefully we'll have some, some others join us before free agency opens as we'll continue. Did you hear our- that? Jake Lisko wants CJ Uzama back on a one-year deal. Look at you, Jake. As we'll continue our free agency preview episodes here leading into the quote-unquote legal tampering period early next week. Until then, thanks for listening to this episode of the Locked On Bengals podcast. Hootay, and have a good one.